ever been asked to tick a box on a form in a section entitled Faith? You may have been able to answer straight away. You might have had to think about it for a while, dredging up memories of what you think your family might have been or confidently ticked no faith. Now through this series, we are going to explore faith. To start with, what even is faith? So, for the form we just mentioned, that tends to refer to one's religion or belief. Faith is also defined as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The Christian Bible talks a great deal about faith. We read in Hebrews 11 that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. What or who do we put our hope and our trust in? Where do we get assurance from today in, such a, in a world of such uncertainty? Whatever the answer, we are all on a faith path. Even having no faith is a chosen path. Now, how did we get here? Why do I believe or not believe what I do? Let's take a moment to think about what faith path we are on today. Now, Mark Mittelberg suggests that there are six faith paths, and maybe we'll see ourselves in one of them. Number one, the relativistic faith path. Truth is what you make it. You do you and I'll do me and we'll just not really talk about it. You know, truth is whatever I want it to be. Which sounds good in theory and all inclusive, but relativism doesn't really work in any other area. So why trust it when it comes to what you put your faith in? I can have total faith that if I were to climb to the top of a tree and jump down, I would just float or fly. However, gravity tells me that in fact, I will crash straight to the ground and do myself some damage. It doesn't matter how fervently I ignore the truth of gravity and replace it with an idea of floating, gravity is the truth. Number two, the traditional faith path. Truth is what you've always been taught. What you were taught might be right if your parents happen to be right, but you won't know until you test your traditions. Have you questioned what you've ever been taught? Have you ever opened the Bible for yourself or with a sense of curiosity? Number three, the authoritarian faith path. Truth is what you've been told to believe. Everyone has authorities in their lives, but before we keep submitting to them, we should examine their message. Even in academics or medicine, for example, we can have been taught something as absolute truth until it isn't like bad smells or miasma being the cause of fatal diseases rather than the germs. In the 1800s, this was widely believed and it was taught with authority in universities and hospitals worldwide. Charles Darwin wrote of an illness he believed was caused by miasma. Now, what is obviously incorrect and unthinkable to us today was once the gold standard belief. Number four, the intuitive faith path. Truth is what you feel in your heart. Hmm, now, I don't know about you, but I know my heart could lead me down some really dark alleys and into some strange places. It also has a habit of changing from one moment to the next. Number five, the mystical faith path. Truth is what you think God has told you. Now, God can still speak, but not everything that seems to be from God really is. Our own emotions, our thoughts and preconceived ideas can sneak in and again lead us down a weird path. God absolutely does still speak to people, maybe not in a loud booming voice, but a thought or through someone else. Many have spoken of undeniable visions of Jesus talking to them. And if this has happened to you, that's amazing. Now search through the Bible and see what aligns with the truth. Search out a pastor or a Christian friend who can walk through that experience with you. And number six, the evidential faith path. Truth is what logic and evidence point to. God has given us amazing brains, yes, all of us, with the ability to think logically and to reason. He has also given us his amazing love letter, which is the Bible. There was a long process to decide which books finally made it into the book we know today as the Bible. There was a strict criterion the ancient writings had to meet in order for them to be considered accurate and included. We also read in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is God breathed. The Christian Bible is not just an academic book. It's not a history book or a rule book. It's also not full of made up stories and fables, but it's full of stories of faith, of people just like you and me, who put their faith in God. 
of those who walked with Jesus and saw the incredible miracles firsthand, of those who were there when the Holy Spirit was given and the church was born. So does it matter what we put our faith in or what faith path we were on? Well, I'd like to suggest that it does because it is through our faith in Jesus Christ that we are saved. I believe there is a very real heaven and a very real hell. And the path to heaven is not an action or a quest, but a belief, a trust, and a faith in Jesus. Have you ever, whilst driving, been so engrossed in a podcast or chatting away to the passenger that you've missed a turning? Now, I always concentrate very hard when I'm driving, but on one occasion, I was on the, aiming for the M25 whilst driving along the M3, and I suddenly noticed massive water rise and roller coasters were on the left. Now, I'd done this journey so many times before, and I had never seen these. I then realised I was on the wrong road. I had missed my turning for the M25, and I was now driving past Thorpe Park. Now, there is not an easy fix for this. I ended up driving through central London, adding an hour to my journey. But thanks to my trusty sat-nav, I still made it home. Now, the road or the path we are on matters. We may feel lost and unsure of which road or path to take. And the Bible can be a really great start to help guide us onto that faith path that leads to Jesus and his promise of eternal life. Now, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's in John 14, 6. So, did you recognize the path that you're on? Maybe it's a little from path two, a little from path five and six. You know, whichever path it is, I hope you'll find something in this series intriguing, something that helps you on the journey of exploring faith. And unlike getting off the M25, you can jump off your current faith path and follow Jesus at any time. Mm -hmm.